Good morning. This is a hat day and it is also a very important day for email education. I keep seeing on forums questions that agents ask and even if you are a any any type of small business this is really important information for you to understand. Now of course I my niche market is real estate agents and mortgage brokers and how they run their business and I have a webinar that you can watch in more detail. It's about a 40, 45 minute webinar that goes into more detail, but I wanted to just take a part of it out and explain this, uh, how email works, because I know that most people don't really understand it because um, I get questions and even the way the questions are framed that they don't really understand email. So if you don't mind, take advantage of this, please share this, put it in groups, get everybody to understand the importance of email and running your business. That's my specialty. And that's what I'm going to talk about this morning. So let me, I'm kind of looking at two different screens, but let's get started. So let's talk about email education. So one of the things that I know many people don't quite get, I'm going to talk about having a proper business email, but I know that not everybody does. And I want you to understand that most people don't have just one email address. I, now I have test accounts because that's what I do for a living, but I run my whole business off one email account. And yes, I email my mother and my brother and my friends and whoever through my business email. Okay. I don't have a separate email address to manage my personal uh, stuff. Cause why? Because what happens and what most people don't get is that for every single email address that you have, okay, there's the address, everybody gets that, you've got an address, but attached to that address can be email and email folder structure, if you save your stuff in a, in a folder structure, uh, contacts, your gold, my friends, and calendar. So every single email address can have that. And depending what email client or email software you use, and depending on what type of email address you have, it may or may not populate in the different sorts of email clients. And I'll explain that in a minute because this is confusing. So an email address, that's that thing that sits up in the headquarters. Um, and so that could be an at Gmail, it could be at iCloud, it could be at Yahoo, at Hotmail, at Outlook.com at AOL.com, uh, there's many at Shaw, at Telus for the Canadians. So you understand that part, right? Okay, let me just see if there's any questions, not yet. So it's really important to understand that. Now, um, I actually would say, even if you're watching this and you're retired and you're not working anymore and you're using Shaw or Telus, stop using them. They're absolutely horrible in the sense that they don't work properly on devices, they're old technology. If you update a contact, it doesn't update everywhere because that's old technology, okay? So remember now, you've got the email address that sits up in the headquarters and you've got possible things that are attached to it if you're using it, depending on how you're using it. And then we have viewers of that email. Okay, this is where people get confused where they say, well, I use Outlook, but you can use Outlook and view a Yahoo email address or a Hotmail email address or Shaw or Telus. These are just viewers. So the viewers are from different vendors. Okay, so some people, let me just get this up. Some people might use MacMail to view the headquarters email. Some people might use Outlook on computers. Some people might use, there's another one called e EM Client. There's many different, uh, these are the big ones, Mac Mail and, and uh, Outlook. And Outlook can be used on a Mac as well. It's third party software, okay? On your device, on your devices, so Androids and Apple devices, you download or you use what comes with it to view your headquarters. Okay, so you could be using Gmail on an on a Apple device. You could be using Outlook. You could be using, there's another one called Spark. There's many different ways to view the headquarters. So if you're using Outlook on your phone, you, down, you must have downloaded it, and then you have to set it up properly. And the configuration of Outlook or Gmail 
or what comes with your device, each one of those, you have to add the signature usually, you have to change the settings inside it because it's specific to that device. Just because you have Outlook on your computer doesn't mean it's exactly the same that you downloaded on your device, okay? They're all just vendors that access your headquarters or your email that's up in the cloud. Does that make sense? So if you're an Outlook user, it's okay. What I recommend people, to be honest with you, is that if you're on a computer that you only use the web version, when you throw in a third party tool to view email, you throw in some issues that might become a problem, okay? Now, I'm not saying that overall, like if you love Outlook and you wanna use Outlook, that's fine, but your email address should be set up properly and it should be configured properly in order to work for a business, okay? Please, if you have any questions, uh, put them below. I also will put a link if you want to go and set up a 30-minute um, review with me to make, uh, look at your setup because an, another issue that happens with email is that Apple users, unbeknownst to you because you just say yes, 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 yes when you're setting it up, now if you add a contact on your phone, you can't figure out why it doesn't update everywhere else. And why is that? Because Apple takes over and we don't want that. We want the main headquarters to be the main headquarters. We don't want Apple taking over. They can do other stuff for you, but not email, contacts or calendar. Because if Apple, if you ever switch devices, you are hooped because you probably don't know how to get your stuff off Apple's iCloud into um, the actual business email that you should be using, okay? Oh my goodness, I'm sorry, I got a little bit of a cold here. Okay, so um, uh, again, email clients or email software. Again, I'm going to talk about Outlook, Mac Mail. You can have whatever comes with your device, or you can download apps as well on your device to view the headquarters. They're all each individual and they have their own settings and nuances. Or you can use a browser to view your web mail. So you can use Chrome, you can use Firefox, you can use Internet Explorer, you can use whatever browser is out there to view your um, email. Now, if you're a Gmail user, you should be using Chrome only because Google likes Google, right? And it, Google Chrome browser and Google email, of course, you want to use that, okay? Same with um, um, Outlook users that have Office 365 business email, I don't recommend it, by the way. If you have that, please set up a call. I'll tell you why. But in the real estate industry in particular, you should not be using a Microsoft business email. They should not be hosting it for you. But if you are, then also you probably are better off to be using a Microsoft browser to view a Microsoft email. Does that make sense? Okay, I'll check the questions later and answer them um, as you uh, as you put them in. Okay, what else do I have to say? So why does it matter? Here's why it matters. So this is really important to understand, okay? So, and again, I have a whole 45 minute webinar you can watch. I'll put the link below um, after I'm done here. But here is the thing. Email addresses that you have, there's a couple things. So. If you have old technology email addresses, Shaw, Telus, MSN, AOL, any of those guys, Yahoo, Hotmail, um, they're probably, I know Shaw and Telus are many of them, like 90% of them are old technology. If you're not paying for a, an, an email address, you're probably using free technology to run your business, which it makes no sense. This will explain why. So what happens, with POP or IMAP, and I'll go through each one of these, is that um, for each of your devices that you're viewing your stuff, if you've got old technology, it's a one-way download. So that means if you read your email on your phone and you delete it, then you go to your computer and it's still there. Oh my gosh, how frustrating, right? So then you have to delete it there. And if you have it somewhere else, you have to go delete it there because it's a one-way download to all the different sources that you're using really really crazy and frustrating that is why okay it does not sync your folders so you create a folder on your on your phone 
it doesn't create the folder elsewhere. So you're having to do things many, many different times. The same thing many times. It makes no sense. And it's only because you don't know. Please book a meeting. Okay, I can't stress this enough. Contacts. Now, contacts are an agent's gold. Okay, I, I cannot stress this enough. Again, in the webinar, I talk about this in way more detail. But if you have been adding contacts, you have old email, you've been adding contacts on your phone, it doesn't update elsewhere, you've been adding it on Outlook, it doesn't update anywhere else, you add it on the web, it doesn't, nothing talks to each other. So again, all mucked up, okay? Calendar doesn't sync. It does not sync with any CRMs, okay? And it does not work with cloud storage. So the other thing is IMAP was the newer technology that came out. Now, it does sync email. So if you delete, it will it will work everywhere, okay? Um, it also syncs folders, which is, again, better. It's a better system. But guess what? Same issues with all that other stuff. It does not work. So if you're wondering why your stuff is not talking to it, one might be Apple. Apple mucks things up. And the other thing is to have it set up with a paid business account. It has to be a specific one. And it because in your industry, if you're a real estate agent, those um, only a specific business email will integrate with many of the real estate CRMs out there. If you're not using a CRM, you're also losing business, probably tens if not hundreds of thousands of dollars in business a year. It just makes no sense not to have your business system set up properly. So when people ask me, well, what email, um, what software should I use? I, I always want to say a web version because it doesn't matter where you go. You can come over to my house, log on. Your stuff's exactly the same. You can go to the office. It's exactly the same. Because if you're using Outlook or MacMail, that's specific to your computer. Does that make sense? And we don't want that. Now, again, there's ways to configure it properly so that that's fine. At least it works properly. But you go to another computer that um, your stuff, you could log on to uh, a web browser and see the same thing. It's just a different view of your information. OK, so in the perfect world, if you actually have your business system set up properly, you ready for this? Everything sinks. Everything sinks. Everything works, everything syncs. It doesn't matter what device you're looking at it, that everything talks to each other. I update my contact on my phone. It updates my CRM, my webmail, Outlook, MacMail, whatever you're touching. I add a calendar appointment. It updates everywhere, right? I move an email to a folder on my phone and it moves it on the webmail version or Outlook or MacMail, whatever you're using. So I hope you understand the power of having this set up, right? I hope I've given you some value today in understanding what's the difference between Outlook and MacMail. When people ask me that, they say, well, no, I'm a, I'm a Mac user, so uh, my email is Mac. Well, your software is Mac. Your headquarters is something different. I don't know, are you using Yahoo? You could be using iCloud. I don't see a lot of agents doing that, which is good. But an iCloud.com email or a uh, Outlook.com email or a Yahoo.com email or Yahoo.ca. Mac Mail is just a viewer of that. doesn't matter. It views any email. So you have to be really specific and understand what you're doing, right? And here's another tip for you. I see this all the time is that uh, you set up your phone. So you set it up with the email client or the software that comes with the phone, right? And then I've seen people, agents, do this. Then they download the Gmail app to do viewing the same stuff. Then they download Outlook because someone else said, oh, use Outlook. They're all, it's just a different vendor. It's the same thing, different vendor. So the view is different, OK? Now think about what happens. You've got three sources, three different pieces of software pulling in the same thing into your device. Now, probably not a big deal if you're sitting local, wherever your city is, and your data plan with your carrier is there. When you travel, think about this. When you travel, you're pulling in three times the data. So I always suggest people, you have to understand what you're doing, but you should only be using one email viewer for your email. 
pick Outlook, pick the one that comes with it. A lot of people just use the source that comes with it. That's awesome, right? Does that make sense? Okay. I hope you have a fantastic day and I hope that uh, you're not confused. But what I will do again is I'll put the link to watch my full webinar. At the end of that webinar, um, you'll have an option to book a free chat with me so I can kind of look at your systems and see if maybe I can help you. And if you already heard me talk enough and you know you want to set up a chat, I'll put a link below to do it a little bit faster. OK, so have a fantastic Tuesday. I hope that uh, I've helped you today. And I really, really can't stress, please share this information in your real estate group forums and other locations and help other people understand this big mess. OK, I want to help as many agents as I possibly can. Thanks so much. And we'll talk to you later. Bye.